guys, Raid Shadow Legends has taken over and gaming will never be the same again. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone. I've been playing Raid for a while now. Royal Guard is my favorite champion for one thing only, wrecking bosses. And Kalia is a workhorse attack champion who is great at burning things. Raid's running a huge series of summer splash events for the whole month where you can get your hands on some incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. And don't miss out on Raid's special Deliana Chase event featuring Deliana, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction. Just log in and play Raid for seven days between now and July 28th and you'll get Deliana for free. This is the best time to get started in Raid. Click my link in the description or scan the QR code that I have on the screen. You'll get unique bonuses for $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Burgess, 200k silver, one energy refill, and one XP boost, and one ancient shard. So you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. New players, listen up. Once you're in game, just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on everything. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Just click the link in the description and I'll see you in the game. The grip was tight on my arm and it dislocated. That's a quote. That is an exact quote from Brian Ortega. The grip was tight on my arm and it dislocated. Now, we don't generally turn to the fighter to find out what happened. We're, that's not what we do. We're the adults in the room. We're the one with the vantage point. We're the one stress-free. We're the one with the advantage of instant replay. We don't generally turn to the fighter. We look down and go, okay, here's what happened. But guys, this was a big miss over the weekend. Huge miss. Your ear Rodriguez grabbed an arm, hoping to do damage to said arm and succeeded. The fight was stopped because of the damage. That's a submission. Very big deal. It will be tough for Yarir Rodriguez to get a title fight against Volkanovski off of this. It will change things. I mean, right this very second, if Yarir was awarded a victory by submission, his name would be the top of all of the pages, it'd be the top of all the sites, the bjpens.coms of the world, the MMAs, the junkies and the fightings, the elbows and the manias. He would be giving quotes on how he thinks he's going to do. They would have gone to Volkanovski by now. Some jerk reporter with the low-hanging fruit would have called Josh Emmett for a response on being swerved. I mean, but this is, this is where we would be. Instead, at the post-fight press conference, Dana was asked, are you going to rematch Ortega and Rodriguez? Are you going to give Emmett and Uriah Faber the fight they've been calling for? The exact question was asked. So it's a colossally big deal. It's a colossally big deal that Yorir Rodriguez is recognized for submitting Brian Ortega, which is what he did. That doesn't bring me some kind of a pleasure, by the way. I thought that fight was going great. I thought Ortega was handling that fight quite nicely. And I have an overarching question that I'm just curious would like to know. How good is Ortega? Is Ortega the third best guy in the world? Is Rodriguez the third best guy in the world, right? It's a really interesting division. When Volkanovski and Max have separated themselves from the pack, and then you can't really do an X's and O's anytime you're throwing Rodriguez in because he's insanely talented. He's insanely and incredibly unique. It's never, it's never apples to apples when you're trying to break somebody down. You never know what the hell's going to happen with him. He just makes all the sense in the world to make the number one contender which is something he may still get. But as of right now, Volkanovsky has not even said his name. As of right now, Dana White, who told him, allegedly, with, with a victory, you will be fighting for the title. Well, he got a victory. But of course, none of us thought it was going to be a freak accident. Was it a freak accident, guys? He grabbed an arm. Just one. All the bones, all the limbs, all the parts of a person's body, he grabbed one arm. He then damaged that arm. Now, again, we don't usually turn to the fighter, right? There's very good reason that you don't come out and go, who do you think won that fight, right? It's one of those things. But sometimes in a situation like this, where it was covered up, the insides, the exterior of that shoulder specifically, 
was opposite to the vantage point that any of us had. So sometimes it is very helpful to turn the fire and say, do you guys know what happened? And when they both tell the same story, then we go, okay, well, now we've got it. Brian Ortega himself said his grip on the arm was tight. It dislocated. How is this not a submission? I'm open to being wrong, guys. I'm pretty passionate on this one. I get the red face. I get the veins here and there. That doesn't make me right. Just because I sit over here and shout, it doesn't make it so. I'm aware of that. But tell me what part I got wrong. This is absent of Ortega himself telling us. He put a grip on my arm and dislocated my shoulder. Absent of Ortega telling us that. There was what's in this sport known as a catch. We saw that with our own eyes. The moment that that situation, that exact position, the moment it was done, the shoulder was dislocated. Not a moment later. Not a second later. Not the next beat. Not the next frame. Not the next thing that we knew. No, right then which would lead a reasonable person to believe and to understand. We don't actually know when it got hurt. From the time they hit the ground, when that thing was intact, to the time that we saw it out of tact, the only action was the catch. So any damage done to a body part that stops the contest would result in a submission. We have to get this right. Guys, I think it's probably already too late. I think it's probably already too late. And Rodriguez, if he can get the momentum behind him and they can push Josh Emmett out of the way, these two boys, Rodriguez and Emmett, they're in a fight right now. The two of them, they can get this situated. And it may still lean to your ear. I'm only sharing with you, it's a conversation that it's really not fair to have. It should not be in half. It would seem as though the $50,000 submission of the night without question would go to Ortega. I told you guys yesterday that was 14 to 1 at DraftKings. First round armbar submission for Ortega was 14 to 1. I was wrong. It's 16. It was 16 to 1. You bet $1,000. You get 16 thousand dollars. I mean, it's very meaningful. You get some jerk that rolls in there with 10 grand. Now all of a sudden he's leaving $160,000, right? It's a very exciting thing, but it's also that rare. You would be taken away from those betters. What are you, how are you going to say it's a TKO? Announcers are talking about he, Ortega's sitting back. He's looking for a heel hook. It was none of those things. He was injured. The injury happened by an offensive tactic done by his opponent who was not given a submission victory. I mean, it's really important that we get these right. And we're kind of in a weird time right now, guys. You and I were always on the same team. Always on the same. Now it's a little bit of, no, Chael's got to go play over here because you guys want to make believe that Charles Oliveira is the champion. It's like, guys, I'll play along too as long as we're winking and elbowing each other, as long as we do fully understand that that title is vacated which would then give us the opportunity, if Charles gets a victory over Islam, to call him a two-time champion. What's better than being the champion of the world, guys? Being a two-time champion of the world. It's really important that we tell these stories and we have the facts the way that they went down. Not to mention, it's a little bit troubling for me that the whole world is watching something but because a voice told you something different, a voice told you heel hook, a voice told you freak accident, that that voice overpowers what you just saw and what you have the ability to rewind and watch again. It truly is a little bit troubling for me that the whole world saw this and is debating whether or not it's a submission. That an athletic body oversaw this fight and is writing it down. That people that went to the window and bet that this would end by victory in the first round for Yari Rodriguez are not being paid. There's other things that must take place for something to be a TKO. Now, it's not the actual rule. But from everything we have observed, which is two boys are fighting and the referee steps in the middle of it. The athlete has failed to protect himself by doing a tap. The corner has failed to protect their athlete by throwing the talent and getting him out of there. The referee can then step in and break the action. There was no action. 
These two weren't attacking each other. They weren't hitting, they weren't fighting of any kind. So to even bring, to even have an eligibility for the definition of TKO, I'm not sure how we ever got there. And aside from everything that was crystal clear and that you all saw yourself, aside from all of that, we will now go to the lowest fruit, right? When you bring the actual athlete in, you're now pretty low. But when the actual athlete says he had the arm tight and it dislocated, we have, without question, without discrepancy, a submission. 